Why did you trade for a pass rusher instead of a corner, considering you've added Hargrave and Gregory already this year? Um, because I felt like it was the best deal uh, to be had. We had a, we had a number of conversations, and um, you know we've always been of the philosophy that it starts up front, and um, you know that that was the deal that made the most sense for us. And as far as some of the guys coming back, Womack, uh, Beal, Gray, maybe even Luter, what, are you expecting contributions from those guys? And if so, when? Yeah, we. Good question, Matt. Um, you know these guys. We, I, I think we're on the verge of, of uh, we got to make that decision. You know, and Kyle and I will have some conversations, and obviously, um, you know, with the with the council of our of our health and performance staff. But I've, these guys are are ready to have their windows open. But you, you know, you also have to have roster spots available. But I do believe a couple, if not a few, are on the verge of having their their windows open. At some point, we got to see, um, you know, what they can provide us. John, just given the investments you'd made in the defensive line be- before this trade, um, just looking at the um, – I mean, not that there has been no pass rush pressure, obviously, but, you know, I- I'm sure it's less than you were expecting. Have you been able to pinpoint kind of what's been going on and why it has not been that kind of dominant pass rush we've seen in the past? Yeah, we've spent a lot of time um, – you know, obviously looking into that because that's our expectation. And we know we have a group group that is capable, but as we've said, it all works together. You know, rushing coverage have to be coordinated. And I, I think it's just other than I thought the Dallas game, it all came together. I was hopeful that, man, okay, we're on to something and, and that we're going to get back to our ways because I think like we, you know, in my mind, uh, we're, we're really good up there. And, um, uh, now we're hopefully even better if if this thing you know comes to fruition with Chase and and um, you know I, it's just that's the question I think we all go as uh, you know into the bye week and and like I said everyone's got to look in inward um, and we we've, we've got to figure this out we know we have um, the requisite talent to not just be good but it, but to be really good and that's incumbent upon everyone to to bring that to the table and there's uh, Many times I got no problem because those guys know it. Uh, we put a lot of resources there. Those guys need to be not just good. They need to be really good and dominant and wreak havoc and all those things. And, and uh, uh, I, I feel like it's on its way, and uh, and we need to do that. And, and that takes everybody. John, how big a part of the equation has, has the, the, the poor run defense been this year and where you try to slot uh, Chase in? Uh, did you feel that that he still has juice in that regard to be able to help that other edge, um, which has obviously been problematic? Yeah, we think Chase is a is a complete player, um, you know. But you you bring up a great point. Um, my old D line coach, uh, uh, you know, Rod Marinelli, and, and you know all those guys that played for him, Warren Sapp. You often hear him say, "Hey, yeah, it's something I grew up with in football in the NFL. You got to earn the right to rush the passer." And, and you do that by playing the run well, and and we've not been good enough there. So, I think when we start doing the little things right, that gives you the opportunities. And um, ultimately, I I think we're gonna we're gonna get this thing right, and and all those things. But that definitely is true. We gotta we gotta shore that up. It starts with stopping the run, and um, you know we haven't been doing that well enough. So we got to do that, and then then, uh, you know, we got ample uh, ability at, and, and options at, as pass rushers to uh, to start to pull this together. Look, John, kind of following up, up, on, follow up on Eric's question there, John. Uh, when, when you started this process, were, were you looking specifically to bolster the defensive line, or was it just mat- a matter of, you know, who can help us the most at the price that fits us? Yeah, it, it's it's you obviously have some areas where you're, where you like, Hey, if we could get something here, I think we could improve our team and our chances. And that's all you're trying to do this time of the year without handicapping us. I mean, it, it really is, um, you know, uh, starting with Sala, um, you know, onto Martin, uh, D'Amico ran, I mean, having those comp picks has really helped us, um, in a variety of ways. And, you know, when you, when you've got your own third round pick, you've got a comp pick, uh, you know, I call it the Rand Miko because I, I don't know which one it is. It's both of them um, because, you know, you, you get you get when you have two guys go the same year. You, I think you get 
um, you know, the third round picks in the next three years. Um, so, you know, um, that that's helpful to be able to have that asset at your disposal. Um, and it's just a reflection, I think, of, you know, being surrounded by quality people and them going on, having success here, um, being rewarded in a program that the league has in place to incentivize it. And, and, um, you know, that allows it, uh, allowed us to, uh, you know, to, to make that happen, knowing we're likely having a comp three coming back as well. So we'll, I think we'll, we'll still have a third. We're expecting that we have another comp three. Um, and those things are valuable, but if you can add a player who can help you, um, I think, uh, it's it's boosted our team before. Emmanuel Sanders did it. Uh, I think Charles O'Minna, who made a lot of contributions. Christian, obviously. So, um, you know, we've had a nice track record, but it's not like it's, it's tough because it's become an expectation that we're going to do something. And, and uh, you know, it's it's everyone's kind of looking at you close to the trade deadline when you when you haven't done something yet. And, and you're saying, hold on, we, you know. We, Randy Gregory, you know, uh, you know, we, we did that and, and I'm, I'm glad we did chase for the right reasons, not because we just felt like, Hey, we got to do something, you know, because like I said, I, I, I believe wholeheartedly that all the answers are right here in the building. We didn't, we didn't have to go do this. We just saw, saw an opportunity and we had, you know, we felt like we could uh, stay true to who we want to be in terms of building through the draft with also adding a player who we, who we felt could help us the rest of this year. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry to wake everyone up so early, um, but uh, go ahead and ask ask questions. I'm... Yeah, John, can you just kind of take us through the timeline of, of when first contact was made with the commanders and just kind of how it went throughout and, and what was kind of the, the thing that pushed it over the, the goal line? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> Martin and I had, had touched base uh, quite a while ago, maybe two weeks ago. And um, just the likelihood I was gauging, you know, the likelihood that he would be available. And Martin thought that it would, that there was a good chance it would be in play. And, uh, you know, we had, we'd been tracking Chase for some time. Uh, Martin did a really good job. I'm very appreciative. Um, he and I are great friends. I mean, he was a mentor of mine when I arrived in Tampa. We played in the same secondary. So we go way back. One of the first calls when I got here to see if he would come join me. Um, and, um, you know, I think relationships matters in, in, in these things. And he, he did a really, um, you know, I'm very appreciative. He kept us in the loop, you know, because we were looking at a variety of things. Um, and he just kind of kept coming back saying, here's where it's at. And um, ultimately, you know, I probably, I, when, did, when did this, uh, I'm, you know, in terms of timeline, when did it break? Uh, when, when was that? You guys know time-wise? I, I'm thinking around... 10:30, 11 was that when it was about 11:30. Like yeah, 11:30. Yeah, so yeah. it was it was fairly late in the game. I mean, this wasn't something I I went to bed um, you know Monday night knowing that we were going to do this deal. We were talking about a few, and it, I don't know. I I had an I had this feeling um, going to bed, and I didn't sleep very well, and waking up that nothing was going to come to fruition just because it. I don't know. The more people do these, it seems like the top is getting higher and higher. And, um, you know, we probably got spoiled a little bit last year in, in getting Christian, but not only such a, a great player, but getting a player who you had for, you know, years to come. And so, you know, that that's a little more attractive than somebody who's got on an expiring deal. But ultimately, we felt like this would give us, you know, a boost. Um, you know, we really like Chase's film. We like where he was you know, uh, seemingly from a health standpoint, obviously, uh, as with any player, all these deals, uh, which are agreed in principle are, are, you know, contingent upon passing physical. So he's got to clear that hurdle today, but he's been playing. So that's kind of how it went down. Was it Chase from the outset in your conversations with Martin or was Montez Sweat um, a consideration, other defensive ends around the, the league a consideration? Yeah, early on, um, early on in the game, um, it's not in the game when, when in my, mine and Martin conversation, it was just Chase. At some point, Martin said, "Hey, listen, for the right price, Sweat could could likely be um, could be had as well." And and uh, you know, so that's that's kind of where it was. And 
John, back to back to back to Chase's health status. Um, I mean, obviously he missed you know about a year and a half of, of games that the the Commanders have been playing him a, a bunch this year. I mean, he played seventy five snaps against Atlanta. So, are you seeing that he looks healthy, uh, fully healthy, or just healthy enough where he's kind of a rotational guy? I'm like you, Cam. I kept turning on the tape uh, and. Uh... You know, like 75, 64, you know, those are a lot of snaps. And so, um, you know, I think the proof is in, um, you know, what's translating on the field. And he's been he's been playing a lot and um, looking, you know, really good. So, um, you know, I, I, there's, you know, there's preliminary medical stuff where they send medical files and all that. And, and then the, 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 the last step is, you know, the, him flying out here today and doing the actual physical. So. You know, we hope that all goes well, but it sure looks like he's been healthy based upon what he's been doing on the field. John, hey, John, you more to John why anything else done yesterday, uh, deal wise, but before the deadline? I'm I'm sorry, I heard the last part. Anything else done? But what was the? Uh, yeah, you know, were the you question? close to getting anything else done, oh. deal wise, yesterday before the deadline? Um, you know, we we were in a lot of discussions, and like I said, um, you know, there was there was a point, you know, going last night you know you can't just you know I've always heard from people sometimes the best deals are the ones that you that you don't do and we didn't want to do it just to do it um we feel like we have you know independent of Chase you know it's something we talked a lot about coming off the tough stretch that we're on everyone needs to look inward um not outward because there's there's no magic pill the answers are right here in this building and so we we didn't feel like we necessarily needed uh, uh you know to go do something and we we weren't going to be reactionary to you know our recent streak but we all along we just felt like it, if if the right thing transpired and ultimately um you know we we thought that this was something that that would really help us and and um you know again like when you have wholesale conviction as a building so you know, obviously, Kyle and I have to make final decisions, but support of your ownership, uh, you know, give Adam Peters and, and R.J. Gillen and their crew a ton of, they did a ton of work, um, you know, that sometimes can amount in nothing. Uh, uh, and sometimes it can, you know, amount with the addition of a player that can really help us. And, and so, uh, you know, to our R&D who, who weighed in on all these guys. And so um, I think it was a good, good team effort. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, can, can, uh, Chase can give us a lift uh, the rest of the way. I know we had some excited people around here. We had some excited players, and we needed a little lift after our recent stretch.